Hey guys, Mr. L here. Um, this should go smooth because I, I just did this whole thing already and uh, I forgot to record it. So what we are working on is grade seven math module one, and we are starting with lesson two. Uh, we skipped the first lesson because it doesn't really apply. It's not something we're going to be able to uh, complete in our current state of uh, distance learning and all that sort of thing. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about proportional relationships and proportional relationships meaning that uh, that's going to be the same in however I apply the function, right? And we've looked at these tables before. So uh, I'm going to go a little bit quick on some of these. If you need to go back or you need to, you know, ask a question uh, at any point, you know, don't hesitate, okay? All right. Example number one, a new self-serve frozen yogurt store opened this summer that sells its yogurt at a price based upon the total weight of the yogurt and its toppings in a dish. Each member of Isabel's family weighed his, I should say their dish, and this is what they found. Determine if the cost is proportional to the weight. So what this is basically saying is this is saying for every um, N weight, we're going to pay X price. And the X is that unit rate that has to be the same for each one. If it doesn't work for each of my four data sets, A, B, C, and D, then it is not a proportional relationship. And hopefully, you know, if you go to a store, you know, a yogurt store or whatever it is, you know, and you're buying, then you're going to pay the same price that anyone else who walks in there will pay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how I can get from my denominator, which is the number in the bottom here, to the numerator. Now for this, I have some 12.5 and I have 3.2. I'm going to look either the 10 divided by 4 or the 5 divided by 2. Let's do this 5 divided by 2. Okay, so we're going to write this out here, 5 divided by 2, which is going to, I can take 2 out, 2 times 2 is 4, 1 left over, put my decimal in, decimal in, 0, drop my 0, now I can take 5 out. So my unit rate should be 2.5. If I look at this, if I take 2.5 times, oops, 2.5 times 4, and I multiply that together, well then I am, I'm going to get to 10. And the same thing, if I take 2.5 and I multiply it by my data set A of 5, well, 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, one decimal point, 12.5. So this works for those. Now the question that it's asking is, and this it gets, there's not a lot of room to work. So I would actually recommend you go get a, a separate sheet of paper. Um, so the question is, is the cost proportional or not? If the cost is proportional to the weight, the cost in this case is proportional. And if you have trouble fitting it into this little line here, uh, feel free, you can put it down there and then just attach your work uh, on a separate sheet of paper, okay? Example number two, in the back of a recipe book, a diagram provides easy conversions to use while cooking. And in cooking, we are going to see a lot of proportional relationships, right? We need to have so much flour to, you know, N flour to X sugar or, um, you know, N flour to X water, whatever it may be, okay? Um, so what we need to do is we need to figure out how we're going to get from this N to my X. Well, the easiest one here, I think, out of my A, B, C, and D is the 1 to an 8. Well, what do I need to do to get to 1 to an 8? I need to multiply it by 8, which means that I need to multiply each of these by 8. Well, 2 times 8 does get me to 16, so that checks out. What about 1 half times 8? Does that get me to 4? Well, 1 half times 8 over 1 is going to multiply across 8 over 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So this it works out as well. And ideally, you'll go and you'll check that one as well. Um, but just so this video doesn't go super long, I'm going to skip that and I'm going to assume that 75% of those are accurate. So I'm going to say that this 
is in fact proportional. So this is proportional. That is proportional. All right, here we go. The actual exercises. During Jose's physical education class today, students visited activity stations. Next to each station was a chart depicting how many calories on average would be burned by completing the activity. So let's look at this. Time is my top one. The calories burned is the bottom. What does it take to make my 1 to 11? Well, we love this, right? It's times 11. And this should be good because we know that trick for multiplying times 11. And all these are times 11 times 11. So we know that it's proportional. Is the number of calories burned proportional to time? Well, yes. Why? This is the trick question, right? Or the big question. How do you know? Because... I spelled because wrong, didn't I? Yes, they all have a unit rate of 11. Okay, they all have a unit rate. So for every one minute, I'm burning 11 calories, okay? Now, if Jose jumped over, jumped rope for 6.5 minutes, how many calories would he expect to burn? So what do we have to do? We know that we have to multiply by 11, 6.5 times 11, which we should be able to do in our heads, right? We split our six and our five. We add six and five together, one and one, to get us 715. I have one decimal point, so I move my decimal point in one, seven point, or 71.5. So he would burn... 71.5 calories, All right? And it is important that we have that last step of writing in a sentence what our actual answer is because they want to know, you know, how many calories would he expect to burn? If I just leave this random uh, number sitting down here, then it's not necessarily going to express uh, that I, I found out, you know, what that means or, or what that is. All right. Example three, summer job. Alex spent the summer helping out at his family's business. He was hoping to earn enough money to buy a new $220 gaming system by the end of the summer. Ooh, I'm going to go right in now, and I'm going to underline that, because I'm assuming that's going to end up meaning something to us at the end, right? Halfway through the summer, after working for four weeks, ooh, we have a time now, right? We know how much we need to spend. We know how much time we have. He had earned $112. Alex wonders, if I continue to work and earn money at this rate, will I have enough money to buy the gaming system by the end of the summer? Oh, so we need to fill out a table here. To determine if he will earn enough money, he decided to make a table. He entered the total money earned at the end of week one and his total money earned at the end of week four. This is awesome because this tells us right now that the unit rate is 28 over one, right? So every one week we earn four. So I'm sorry, for every one week we earn $28. So now all I need to do is I need to take each of these numbers in the top and multiply it by 28. Okay, and please go through and fill out each of these, right? So 28 times 2 is going to be 56. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add for each of those things. Um, and I'm going to give you kind of a minute here to go through and solve those. And then as you do, I am going to just kind of pause here. Okay, so hopefully we're good. Here we go. Now, if we did this next one, it would be 28 times 3, which is going to end up getting us $84. 
And we're looking like we're getting closer and closer, right? So the same one, we do 28 now, 28 times 5. So that's getting us to $140. And it looked like at the beginning, like we were easily going to be able to make it. So this would be 168, right? And then the last one is 28 times seven weeks, which is $196. And if anybody's solved this already or have gone ahead, then you should know that by the end, we are going to end up having $200. And $24. So work with a partner to answer Alex's question. Okay, we've been working together. So the question was, if I continue to work to earn money, will I have enough money to buy the gaming system by the end of the summer? So it is, yes, Alex will have enough to buy the system okay are alex's total earnings proportional to the number of weeks he worked yes because because why that's the question right well it's because he earned the same each week. Each week he earned $28, right? So it was a proportional relationship. Our unit rate stayed at 28 over one through the whole summer. All right, so we're going to move on to the problem set. And if you do get stuck on this, make sure you let us know. Uh, we're going to help you to solve this. There's going to be an exit ticket and homework. Um, I will put the homework up in a separate video file. If you have any questions on it, you can follow along in the homework. Okay, guys, thank you. I know that this video is a much longer than they normally are, uh, but I, I think there's a lot of good stuff here. And so if you have any questions, let me know.